Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you can see me. I'm uh, I'm really excited today. I was doing some saw work and I thought, you know what? Let's pull out my brand new, I just purchased this Oregon chain breaker and spinner. I've been humming and hawing about making this jump for years. I don't use a ton of chain, but I have a ton of saws and I'm you know, I rock chains and do stuff like that. I have chains here that are too long. I have chains that are too short. And I, you know, I thought to myself, why not? It would be nice to be able to spin chains. This is an investment. Um, I think it's the right investment for me. And uh, what lit the fire under my butt is uh, Brock at B-Ray Farms reached out to me. How's it going, buddy? You check him out on Facebook. I believe that's how you get a hold of him. Again, I'm not on Facebook, so, but uh, B Ray Farms is the uh, is the name. And Brock reached out to me, and he said, "Hey, would you would you like to try a a uh, Sumara bar and some Archer chain? I would just like feedback on it. If you don't like it, that's okay. And if you do, that's awesome. So uh, I've never run Archer chain." Um, I've heard mixed reviews. Some people really like it, some people don't. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try it. Now, what he did was he just he sent me a loop of chain. Um, I'm not sure how much is on there, but this is all new to me. It's fun to learn uh, for me, anyways, to learn another skill to put in the old toolbox. And uh, so today's video, I'm gonna try and break some chain. I've never ever done this before, so. Um, this could be interesting. I've watched a couple of videos on how to use these. The instructions that come with these things are pretty useless. So <laughs> I'm going to put that straight up. It's just like pictures and uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I was reading the instructions and I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, there's got to be some writing with these. The writing's like wear safety glasses, yada, yada, yada. So anyhow, friends, I'm going to bring you guys in. Let's break some chain together. Um, I'm going to make up a loop for that bar that Brock sent me. I'll show you guys how to find out how many drivers are on your bar. Some of you might not know that. I'm sure a lot of you do. And, uh, let's break some chain. So he sent me some tie straps and, uh, or some, some links and a roll of chain. And again, it's the Oregon 24549B spinner and 24548B breaker. Um, these are quality. You can get lower dollar ones. I thought about just buying a generic one, but you know, the price difference wasn't that much. This is an investment, but, uh, I'm starting to think about just buying rolls of chain and spinning up my own loops. Now, the reason for me doing it, I don't go through a ton of chain, but I go through enough chain that it's nice to have access to fresh chains. Also for testing. Sometimes I just want to test the saw with a fresh loop of chain to give myself a base setting. Um, for me, because I live rural, friends, there's not a ton of places to buy chain. A lot of the places I, I go to don't have chains to fit my bars. Either the wrong gauge or not enough drive lengths. Running 32s and 28s here, most places here stock 24, like your 84 driver and down. Well, that doesn't really, you know, that doesn't really work for me, so. Um, that's the reason why I'm doing it. If you don't use a ton of chain, this might not be for you, but anyhow, and these should be mounted to the bench. I haven't mounted them yet because I haven't decided where I want these things living life. So rather than drilling holes in my bench, um, I'm going to leave these loose for now. Hopefully they work not mounted, but we'll see. Anyhow, I'm going to bring you guys in and let's attempt to spin some chain. This might be hilarious or I might do it on the first go. Who knows? Let's play with this. And again, Brock, thank you for sending this stuff. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, people like you make this channel rock and roll. Anyhow, I'm going to set you guys up and over like I do. And let's figure this out. I read the instructions. There's different like anvils or heads, whatever you want to call them. I got the right head in there. Um, these will do 325, 38, and 404 by the looks of it. So um, I'm not... I'm pretty sure I can do this, friend. So let's do this together. And uh, again, I've never done this, so if uh, if it if it's funny or it's just like when I did that chain grinder video, I've ground chain, but I've never used that grinder. I just put it out there so people could see one working, and 
and uh, see what the deal is with it. It'll be the same with this. I'm a complete novice at breaking chain. Now, I've done a lot of ch uh, chains for motorcycles. That is something I'm used to. This is a totally different operation. So, anyway, I'll set you guys up and let's see how difficult it is to break chain. Okay, I got a chain laid out here. Now, a couple things. I find this kind of interesting. The Sumara and the Husqvarna. You guys saw this in the video. There's actually a slight length difference. The Husky's longer. And you can tell. I'll put the light on here. Put it right here. You see that? 28 inch, 3 eighths, 93 drive lengths, 50 gauge. Okay. So. This is a 93 driver, 50 gauge. This one, 28 inch, 58 gauge, 3 8 92, okay? So, um, you see guys run the same bars and that, and there's a reason for that because then you can flop chains. So, this bar here is 50 gauge, this is 58, so I'll have to keep my chains separate. No big deal. Again, I don't run a tree service, so it's not really an issue for me. But be aware, if I made a 93 driver chain for this, it might be too long. Um, so I'll just keep that in mind. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm using this as a reference. I'm going to zoom you guys back out, right about there. I'm using this chain as a reference. I'm going to take my chain off the roll here. And this is just for fun. It's a fun video. Getting to do something I've never done. And uh, you guys pretty much, if I want to do something, you guys make that happen. So it's pretty cool. Okay, we're going to take some chain off the roll. Now, all I'm going to do is, I counted already. I know it's 93 because I went, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, and all the way to the end. And we have an odd number here, right? So we ended up with 93. That was my first guess that, hey, we, we got something going on here. Okay, I'm going to unroll this chain from this roll. And all I'm going to do is line this up and I don't know if this is a good idea or not but it'll give me a rough guesstimate of how much chain I need okay I'm gonna put one chain over the other and then just loop it back onto itself and then I need one tie strap right because you're counting your drivers these are your drivers you're counting your drivers when you're doing this okay so I need 92 drivers so this is just how I'm gonna do it you can count them or whatever We'll end up with a chain, hopefully, or I'll screw it up. But either way, we're having fun and we're learning. I like learning. I read a lot. Um, I get I get obsessive when I'm reading about something. Um, I just like that. When I want to learn something, I need to learn. Like, and then I put what I've learned into practice, and I don't. I don't take anybody's word for things. I, I learn on my own and I, I will test things that I read and see if they're right or wrong for, for my experience. Okay, so I'll just figure out how much chain I need here. I'll do a quick driver count and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've counted and marked out. This is the rivet I need to take out right here. Hopefully you guys can see that, this black one. I'm gonna get rid of this chain. It's not too bad, just count them two at a time. Get rid of this chain. And clean up my bench a little bit because it's a mess already. Okay, so I have my tie strap, both ends of my chain, and my cutter. Now the instructions say to tighten this just so that, okay, just so that it touches. So I'm just gonna do that and just keep snugging it. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Like I said, first time. It says to oil the ends. Of course I didn't do that. <laughs> it's getting looser every time I turn it. Just continually turn this, spin it. And it's getting closer to the tie strap, which tells me that we're riveting chain. Now, I'm going to check this because I'm guessing you don't want this too tight. I don't know if they're 
would be a situation where you made it too tight. Well, here, friends, I'll show you this. This is fumbly to film, actually, because the chain keeps coming apart. There it is, my first riveted chain. And I think I'm gonna go a little further on it. I don't think we riveted it quite enough. Again, this is a chain I'll be running and uh, make sure I got my safety gear on. I don't think it's gonna come apart, but it can happen. I don't think I've ever had a chain break on me. I know, I know it's possible though. Okay, snug that back down. I think I'm just going to keep going until I'm rubbing the tie strap. Until I see no space there. And that should give me a good rivet. And again, I'm going to bolt these down. Just wasn't sure where I wanted it or how much force is required. Okay, I think we're good. So undo this. Let's have a look. Did you look at that, friends? And it's loose, and it's... Okay, let's do the other side. Oh, well, that was easy. That was actually really easy. So easy, even a Tin Man can do it. So, so if you've been wondering about this stuff, I know I have for years. Now i got to find the right loop, but if you've been wondering about this stuff, um, you know... Sometimes it's hard to pull the trigger on something. I don't need this, friends. It's more of a want. And, uh, you know, I've been humming and hawing about getting one of these. And again, we'll uh, reef it down there. I wonder if I can get an overhead shot for you guys on this one. There you go. You can actually... I'll zoom you guys in. You can actually see, right in there, you can see the end of the rivet. Okay? I'm going to tighten it down and then spin it. And you'll see... We'll be getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay. I have some chains that are way too long that somebody gave to me years ago and I've never been able to use them. And since I don't break chain, they're just sitting there, right? So now I can get some tie straps. Um, and fix those chains so that's kind of cool just keep spinning it sorry for the wobbliness like i said i just wanted to try this and then i know then i know my requirements for a base probably something fairly sturdy okay let's undo this let's have a look i think we're good well, would you look at that? That one can probably get just a hair more. It's just not, it's not quite as nice as the last one I did. There you guys go. I think we're good. Um, how much force? Not a, I mean, it's not a huge amount of force, but you definitely got to have some strength in your hands to do this. There she be, right there. Kashunka, Kashunka, we have our first chain. Let's put this on a saw. Okay, well, since we're still testing and tuning my 371 build, that I now have up and running, and I think it's perfect. Let's run this on here. See how this thing goes. Oh, that, that went well already. Perfect. Nice. So, honestly, friends, I think I could probably get away with a with a 93 drive length on this chain, but I'm not going to muck around or on this on this bar. What do we got here? Okay, undo the adjuster. It's close. Right there. This 
This is exciting. My first spun chain. Now, I know some of you are laughing because you do it all the time, but this is, this is something I've wanted to get into since I started messing around with saws and just never have. There's so many times where it's like, I wish I had a spinner right now. Take that off. That'll help. Okay. Tighten this up. This is a brand new chain, so I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's going to stretch a bit, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, that Oregon EXL I run does not stretch, but as I understand, it's probably three times the price of this chain. So, um, this isn't, this isn't at, this isn't always directed at the professional. What about the rest of us is just cut firewood. Maybe you need a lower cost chain and you want to try something different. Well, maybe this is the chain for you. Just going to tilt this bar up, lock it down. There you go. Ooh, that's tight. That's too tight, friends. Well, on this. New bars, you kind of got to play with them, I find. Until the rails and everything get broken in. Let's, uh, let's give her... Okay, that's better. You can hear she's a little gritty. That's normal with new bars. Every new bar I've ever had uh, is a little gritty. Uh, you're going to polish off the rails when you first run it. Okay, let's fire this thing up and start the polishing. That is a good, good looking bar, isn't it? Stopped raining. Hey friends, I'm just adjusting the carb here. this chain cuts not too bad this saw is breaking up still i guess we'll go back to the bench with this one maybe it is time for a coil uh high jet is at three quarters to five eighths and it still sounds rich at five eighths and still sounds like it's breaking up so anyhow <laughs> we'll finish it right here my first spun chain that's cool and uh, we'll definitely take this thing out cutting. I got to tinker with this saw more. I don't know what's going on with it. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.